Hi, I'm Dr. Christina Dervetis. Welcome to another video in the series Talking IUC with Dr. D. I'm Dr. Christina Dervetis, an OBGYN in Newmarket, Ontario, Canada. Uh, and today's video is going to talk about um, all of the different contraceptive options uh, with emphasis on the reversible options, but all the different contraceptive options and their efficacy rate, um, which also could be looked at their inefficacy rate as well, their failure rate or their chance of unintended pregnancy. And I'm going to be using a poster that was provided by the Society of Obstetricians and Gynecologists of Canada. It's a very great um, teaching tool that I've used with my patients because it very visually um, shows patients the varying degrees of uh, failure. Uh, so the numbers here, this represents uh, the number of unintended pregnancies during the first year uh, of use for this partic each particular contraceptive method uh, per 1,000 women. And in this column, we have uh, sort of perfect use or the perfect world. So this would be pretending that we're robots. We do everything 100% right, 100% of the time. We never forget a pill. We never forget to pick up a prescription. We use each method perfectly each time. So that's column one. Um, and this column is uh, the real world numbers. So acknowledging the fact that we're human beings who sometimes might forget to take a pill um, or who uh, might use a method improperly or forget to bring one, uh, etc. So I'm going to walk through each of these um, these options. I'm going to start actually at the bottom. Um, this column is perhaps the most shocking to most of my patients who are very, very surprised to know uh, that the failure rate of condoms, uh, even if used perfectly, um, so the condom doesn't break or tear, um, or there's not a condom mishap, even if used perfectly, the failure rate is 20 per thousand women, um, which is 2% basically, even in a perfect world. Now, um, in this column represents the real world. Uh, and the reason for the difference here is a number of things. It could be condom breakage, but it could be just condom slippage or inappropriate use of condoms um, to use a condom uh, Effectively for contraception, you need to remember to bring one and have it uh, on hand. Um, it's probably best that you're not intoxicated when you're using condoms. In fact, it's probably best that you're not intoxicated ever when you're engaging in um, sexual activity. That's another conversation. Um, but bottom line is, is that in the real world, uh, the failure rate of condoms is much, much higher than what you would imagine. And it's up to 18%. I will just take this opportunity though to emphasize that condoms are the only one of these options that actually prevent sexually transmitted infections. So very, very important if you are with a new partner, regardless of what you're using to prevent pregnancy, that you're still using condoms to prevent STIs. So moving up from condoms, um, I'm gonna basically lump these three together um, just because there's not, their numbers are similar, but basically these are all different methods of uh, combined uh, hormonal contraception. Each of these methods, um, I'm gonna uh, talk about the combined oral contraceptive pill, um, the patch and the ring. Um, each of these methods in the real, uh, or rather in the perfect world, we'll start there, um, has about a three per thousand chance of pregnancy, which is pretty good. Um, but the key is that you have to remember to use each uh, method 100% uh, properly, 100% of the time, not forgetting a pill, not forgetting to change your patch, uh, which is once a week application uh, to the skin, and not forgetting to change your uh, vaginal ring um, monthly. So um, if you were perfect, the rate is good, about three per thousand, but in the real world, because people sometimes forget to do those things or might forget to get to the doctor to get their prescription, um, various reasons. Um, but in the real world, the actual rate of pregnancy is 90 per 1,000 women or 9%. Um, so again, that's pretty high and a lot higher than what most patients um, would anticipate. 
Uh, now, um, Depo Provera, also known as the shot, which is uh, progesterone only. Um, again, in a perfect world, if you remember to go every three months for your injection without fail, never forget to make that appointment, never forget to uh, pick up that prescription, then the failure rate is actually quite excellent. Uh, it's about two per uh, thousand, um, less than one percent. But in the real world, um, again, because sometimes people forget to do those things, um, the failure rate is actually 60 per thousand women or 6%. So then I'm going to go back um, now and just compare a little bit between the levonorgestrel IUD or progesterone IUD at the top here. That, that would be Marina um, uh, and Kylina, the two most popular brands uh, available in uh, Canada right now, um, and versus the copper IUD. Um, you'll notice the efficacy rates are slightly different, uh, and I'll explain that a little bit. Um, but bottom line is, is both of these um, methods, the now the levonorgestrel IUD, perfect world equals real world. And the reason for that is that once the IUD is in, after that five minute visit, you have five years of worry-free contraception and you don't have to remember to do anything really. Um, other than to use condoms if you're with a new partner for STI prevention. But other than that, from a pregnancy prevention standpoint, once the IUD is in, you are good to go for five years. Your biggest responsibility is remembering when that five years is up and making sure that you make arrangements to have the IUD changed. Um, now, the uh, overall failure rate is a little bit higher with the copper IUD. Uh, the reason being that the levonorgestrel IUD um, has some added mechanisms uh, that the copper IUD, uh, mechanisms for preventing pregnancy that the copper IUD does not have. Um, it uh, has the advantage of having a thickening of the cervical mucus, um, which is a progestogenic effect. And also the progesterone hormone helps to thin out the lining of the uterus, such that if there happened to be uh, a fertilization, which is very, very rare, the chances of implantation are less because the lining of the uterus uh, is too thin to accept an embryo. So that's why the rates are a little bit different. So with the um, Marina and Kylina, the levonorgestrel IUDs, two per 1,000 chance of pregnancy in the perfect world and also a two per 1,000 chance of pregnancy in the real world. Um, so 0.2%, uh, less than 1% chance of pregnancy in the real world. For the copper IUD, because it doesn't have those uh, additional progesterone uh, advantages in terms of preventing pregnancy, the um, perfect world rate is six per uh, uh, 1,000 women or 0.6%, so still less than 1%. Regardless, the take home message here um, is that the uh, IUD is at the top of the pyramid um, and is your best option in terms of um, real world um, prevention of unintended pregnancy. Um, you'll notice that tubal ligation didn't even make it to the poster, so uh, Tying someone's tubes or tubal ligation um, is an option for permanent contraception. Um, one of the most common situations where we're performing tubals these days is if someone's having a C-section um, and we're there surgically anyhow and tying the tubes doesn't add any additional surgical risk. Um, however, um, right now, because of the risks of surgery, to perform a tubal ligation, the need for general anesthetic, um, a two week recovery period. Um, the current guidelines are that a tubal ligation done as a separate surgery on its own, uh, even in a woman who is 100% certain she doesn't want any future pregnancies, still because of the risks of surgery, a tubal ligation should be considered one of our last resort contraceptive options. Um, but I would add that the efficacy rates of the IUD compared to uh, tubal ligation and vasectomy are similar. All of those methods have a roughly less than 1% chance of pregnancy. And just another reminder uh, to check out the official website of the Society of Obstetricians and Gynecologists of Canada. It's called www.sexandyou.ca. Um, it's an exceptionally thorough and straightforward 
easy to use website with very trustworthy information about uh, sexual health and contraception. I'd also encourage you to check out their um, app or um, decision-making tool called uh, It's a Plan. Uh, and this is uh, an opportunity for you to basically enter in your own personal medical information and the um, app or tool helps you uh, decide which contraceptive options you have to choose from, uh, which might be contraindicated and uh, not an option for you. Um, but it goes through um, all of the options, pros and cons uh, in terms of side effects and risks. Uh, it also reviews all of the um, efficacy rates or failure rates that I've just discussed today. And uh, just a reminder, as I always say at the end of each video, um, in less than the time that it took for you to watch this video, you could have had an IUD inserted because the whole procedure takes about five minutes and will give you five years of worry-free contraception. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and we'll uh, see you uh, next time. Take care.